greetings everyone welcome to the 238th session of the online optom learning series ols and for today's session we have with us miss madhumati subramanya uh, madhumati is a deputy manager at the department of contact lenses at shankara netralaya and in addition to this role she is also an associate professor at the elite school of optometry and the shankara netralaya academy Uh, where she has about 18 years of experience in teaching as well as uh, her clinical experience where she sees patients in the clinic she's uh, completed her bachelor's of optometry from the elite school of optometry and has been awarded three fellowships one from the fellowship certification from the shankara netralaya academy for contact lenses she's also uh having a fellowship from iacl which is the international association of contact lens educators and more recently uh, she has also completed her fellowship status from the scleral lens education society so with that experience uh, we are here today to discuss about the contact lens options for children whereby she will share with us uh what are the indications some case series as well in terms of fitting uh, kids with contact lenses so welcome ma'am on to the platform uh, let me just leave the screen time to you please yeah yeah thank you so much for greeting thanks for the warm introduction so first of all i feel so honored to be part of this uh, uh, wolf team because uh, so far you have crossed the crosser uh, 238 series so that was quite awesome and uh, it's like I feel so privileged to be a part of it, and I am now in the two the two hundred and thirty eight uh, series. So thank you all, thank you Fakhruddin and team, and uh, good evening to all and uh, uh, from various parts of the world. So my topic is like I am going to completely discuss today about the fitting aspects of contact lens in children. That is going to be a completely pediatric age group. so before i we start the session i would like to raise a poll question so the question would be how many of you here have fitted contact lenses for the pediatric patients from let's say the age group is infants to 12 years of age yes i have no i have not i have just observed in the clinic half of them almost 40% i would say have fitted some kind of contact lenses for this pediatric age group uh another 40 or percent of them have observed it and there is couple of them who probably have not gotten a chance to fit them yet so we have mixed group of people today so we have extreme pe- pe- uh, uh, audience who have fitted lenses say 43 percentage and 38 percentage they have observed in the clinic so now the role of like that my job is like i am going to start what i, I really wanted to convey in this uh, session so thanks for sharing this uh, whole uh, fakhruddin so the overview of my talk uh, talk is going to be like i would like you to find answers for these four set of questions why when what and how so why the reasons for prescribing contact lens when what is the proper appropriate age for prescribing contact lens for the pediatrics and what type of contact lens is to be given and how do i fit the contact lens and how do i convey or how do i give instructions to the parents so these are all the four set of questions which are going to run in my mind whenever i see a pediatric patient so the very first question which i'm going to discuss today is why and when i should prescribe contact lens for the children the indications are you all know it because it's like a a day in and day out you see many of the patients like in the, with these conditions fak so pediatric fak it would be because of the congenital cataract or sometimes it could be because of the traumatic cataract uh, which could be either unilateral or it can be bilateral as well or any high refractive error say high myopia or high hyperopia so those children who are wearing high glass uh, high refractive error they are going to be good candidates for contact lenses and any irregular as stigmatism which could be due to trauma or any corneal ectasia or sometimes due to post penetrating keratoplasty definitely they are the ideal candidates for lenses anisometropia you all know definitely children will not be so cooperative for unbalanced glasses so there are chances that glasses can pop be uh, the, the glasses can slide down or the child can uh, uh, go into amblyopia so this is the major indication for contact lenses and nystagmus so studies have proven that 
the amplitude of nystagmus is come down with the help of rgp lenses so this is one of the indication photophobia in case of aniridia or iris coloboma due to traumatic uh, uh, tra trauma or albinism or aa chromatopsia and finally the myopia control so these are all the indications or these are all the clinical scenarios where i would give contact lens for my patients so the role of optometrist here so as a practitioner i have to tell about the advantages of a contact lenses than spectacles so how am i going to convey this to the parents or how am i going to convey this to the uh, 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 parents or the children as well so we, it it is it is a known fact that when compared to spectacles contact lenses are going to give a more developmental uh, development in terms of visual acuity the eye hand coordination is going to get much improved and the per perceptual or motor skills are going to be much much improved when compared to that of the spectacles and definitely in cases of anisometropia in order to prevent the amblyopia or difference in the retinal image or the anisoconia you can prescribe contact lens so that can be one of the uh, 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 indication or you can just explain to the parents and again high refractive error say in case of high plus glasses or high minus glasses there are chances there can be peripheral distortions or jack in the box phenomenon or ring scotoma which can in on a further leaf can lead to amblyopia which can be very well uh, avoided with the help of contact lenses and definitely these children they have absence of prominent no nose in a uh, prominent nose bridge so what happens when such a kind of imbalanced glasses or thick glasses are worn there are chances the lens glasses can slide down or the children can see through the glasses where the visual acuity or the complete management is not achieved at all so in such a case lenses are going to be the ideal option and again to an extreme level the child children are going to be so so playful they can remove their spectacles easily so these are all the keeping keeping all these in mind you would just start to counsel to the parents about the advantage of the contact lens than the spectacles this is how this is the right way to introduce the terms to the parents so who are you going to address so definitely children you are not going to directly talk to them about contact lens you are going to talk to the uh, talk to the parents so communication is the key the word communication is the key why because you will have significant clinical challenges because always the parents would not uh, want the child to wear contact lenses they would always say that instead of contact lenses why, sh why why should i wear this why should i wear contact lenses instead of glasses what is the problem in wearing glasses because maintenance of spectacles are going to be very very easy and they can monitor well whereas wearing contact lenses is going to be a tedious task for the children as well as for the parents so communication here is the key you start to explain or you start to motivate the parents about the advantages of the contact lenses so that they will get a clear about idea about the lenses and then they would uh, go for the uh, lens trial and again if it's not that only the contact lens practitioner is involved in prescribing lenses it is like a role of multiple professionals coming to play say for example you as a practitioner you are going to talk about contact lens to the parents and second role the pediatrician or the ophthalmologist they are going to talk about lens advantages of lenses over spectacles so in that way the parents are going to get convinced and definitely they are going to uh uh start to approach uh, for the contact lens trial so here it is like a triad the good parental motivation and good counseling from the practitioner and good counseling from the uh, uh, pediatrician is going to be the real key for the success for the contact lens fair for the, for the child and the rewarding results what you expect out of it is the child's visual acuity is going to get improved and lifelong the vision is going to get saved so this is going to be the key role of explaining or communicating to the parents so this is fine so when should i think a lot about prescribing lenses or talking about lenses to the parents so there are few conditions when there is poor parental motivation suppose the parents are not completely motivated then you have to think a lot or you can recounsel them about the lenses or you can call them after few months of a spectacle wear and then talk about contact lens and then introduce slowly the lens into the child's life or sometimes the parents are even though you prescribe the lenses 
suppose the parents are unable to articulate the problem say suppose a child has redness or the lens got displaced or sometimes the child is like uh, having itchy eyes which the child, parents they are not unable to uh, pick up so then that that is also going to be a serious adverse event in the future so the poor parental motivation if in case you happen to see such a kind of uh, scenarios you think a lot before you prescribe the lenses to them so these are all the fact uh, facts which should come into my mind or the uh, whenever i talk about contact lens and spectacles so the uh, optics behind contact lens and spectacles it's very 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 important to know in cases of high refractive areas the contact lens provides about 15 percentage of more wider field of view when compared to that of the glasses and again in terms of magnification between the two different uh, spectacle corrected eyes it's going to be 2 percentage per diopter i want to share an example here say for an aphakic child say the right eye is plano and left eye is plus 15 the difference between two uh, the two eyes is going to be is 15 diopter between eyes so as i have mentioned per diopter it's going to contribute about 2 percentage of magnification difference so here in this case it's going to be 30 percentage of magnification difference with the spectacles which is which is like completely not tolerated at all by the child so suppose if you are going to prescribe glasses for this combination of prescription then the magnification with the spectacles is going to be intolerable or if in case you are planning to prescribe lenses the percentage will go between 8 to 12 percentage which is like within the tolerable limits but it can also impair the binocular function so the very next option which would be ideal for the child would be implantation of the intraocular lens which is going to make the uh, uh, magnification difference will not be there at all so it becomes a normal uh, normal uh, normal viewing eye so these two factors you have to think uh, if you have keep in mind before you start to prescribe for high refractive errors as well as when you see a prescription say an isometric prescription so what are the prerequisites i should have have in mind so before i pick the lenses first and foremost thing keratometric reading is very important and then cyclopetric refraction to know about the uh, ocular power and horizontal visible iris diameter to know about the uh, for selecting the lens diameter and quick torchlight examination is very important in order to pick up the uh, anterior segment segment abnormalities suppose you do not have any auto key or suppose you do not have any uh, let's say there is a, you don't have any k value or you don't know the spectacle correction so what are the other methods which i can uh, propose so there are two methods of fitting contact lens for the pediatric age group one is the trial lens fitting method and another is lens fitting under anesthesia so coming on to the trial lens fitting method it's nothing but you should have a wide range of set of lenses in your clinic and you will have to put the lens on eye and you will be just seeing the lens fitting and based on that you tend to change the lens fitting so how am i going to do particularly in pediatric patients so these are all the challenges definitely i would have because the power is going to be completely extreme and definitely maintaining wide range of pediatric set is going to be cumbersome for me so what should i do next and again if the if at all i have all the setup that if the child is too uncooperative or it's like completely crying what is the next step should i do so what to do in such a case so you have the guideline parameters so how to choose the lens parameters based on the k value and uh, corneal curvature and lens power so these are all the guidelines given so considering the age if it is going to be 6 weeks the uh, back vertex power will be close to plus 34 diopters it is assumed and if it's going to be 6 months the power is plus 28 diopters and if it's going to be at the age of 1 year it's going to be plus 24 so as the age increases the power keeps reducing and again if in case i do not have the k value based upon the age group i can select the or i can tentatively or i can take the first trial lens between this uh, diopteric range say the age is 1 to 2 months 47 to 50 diopters i would select if the age is 3 to 4 years i would select 43 to 44 diopters so here in this tableau column we can see 
as the age increases the cornea becomes flat and again considering the corneal diameter at birth the corneal diameter is close to 9.8 mm which increases with age which is close to 12 mm at the age of 3 to 4 years so when do i think about this if in case the child is uncooperative or if i do not have any wide set of trial and trial set in my clinic then i will just start the first trial lens based on these parameters so you are able to obtain the lens power you are able to obtain the base curve and you are able to obtain the lens uh, uh, diameter so based on this what we can do we can do the lens fitting and then you can make the changes according to the lens fitting characteristics so this is one method what we have seen is the trial lens fitting method you have another method called fitting lenses under anesthesia so as the name suggests anesthesia so definitely the child is going to be completely cooperative and uh, the fitting effect assessment is not going to be a much uh, a major issue at all and you can put any number of lenses to achieve the final fit but the risk factors is like under anesthesia it is a, a, the risk is involved involved in anesthetizing the child and definitely with blink or the dynamic fitting is not possible you have to voluntarily do the uh, uh, a lid movement to check the lens fitting and it's going to be quite ex expensive so unless and until you are skilled enough to try the trial lens method uh, don't go with the uh, eue method which is quite risky when compared to the other method so we should know what are the lens options available for the pediatrics so we have rgp lenses silicon elastomer lenses from bosch and law the brand name is still soft hydrogen lenses siloxane hydrogen lens which is nothing but the silicon hydrogen lens material hybrid lens which is soft form having a combination of central rgp and the peripheral soft skirt for comfort and again you have the scleral lens option as well for uh, ectatic conditions as well as ocular surface disorders so when i'm going to fit a contact lens for a pediatric age group what all should come into my mind so definitely you are not completely going to rely upon the subjective response at all because the children are not going to respond to you 100% or you cannot completely rely on it so it is your own skills objectively how to measure everything all the parameters so make sure whatever the parameters you take the lens the spectacle power for say or the curvature or the measurement of the diameter everything whatever you take make sure it is going to provide adequate or very good visual correction and definitely the material which you choose it should have high dk by t because children can fall asleep you cannot have any control at all so in such a case even if the child goes asleep the hypoxic signs can be prevented and again lens wearing schedule whenever the child is active the lens can be worn if the child falls off asleep they have to take off the lenses so all that kind of uh, uh, scenarios you need to think about before you uh, 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 talk about the wearing schedule and ease of handling for the parents because you motivate a lot or you try to give a larger lens to the parents which is really cumbersome for them to put the lens and then remove it so obviously the journey is not going to be successful somewhere or the other the parents are going to get demotivated and they would not fit the lens which can lead to the amblyopia or permanent decrease in vision so it is your responsibility to think about providing a lens which is going to be very easy, easy for handling the uh, easy, easy easy for handling for the parents again the material of the lens it should be deposit resistance because the child is not going to come and say i have irritation or i have discomfort so on a frequent follow ups whenever you are just monitoring the child on a frequent visit make sure you just assess the lens fit along with the lens surface as well if there are deposits then you can just have a sign of like improper cleaning of lenses or the child is like uh, uh, changing the lenses even much more frequently rather ch uh, changing it uh, quarterly you can make the modality as monthly as well so keeping all these in mind you will have to select a lens material or you will have to have a good contact lens uh, uh, for the children so after this brief introduction i would like to have few cases 
so that uh, we, we can just uh, uh, apply the concepts, whatever we have uh, discussed so far into the case and then uh, fit the lenses. So this is like um, one of the child who has visited our clinic. He is two years old male and he had uh, the informant where was parents. They said the child had decreased in vision for the past one and a half months and they had a uh, past ocular trauma. Like uh, the past ocular history revealed that the child had the trauma with a goat horn one and a half months back and they have undergone multiple surgeries like corneal tear repair, lensectomy, vitrectomy, all were done. And now that they have visited our hospital the birth history was quite uh, normal it was not uh, significant no there were no birth complications noted so this is the visual status of the child so left eye is perfectly fine the right eye the light fixation the child did not follow the light and we tried to do the card of visual equity check it was showing left eye binocularly 6 9.5.5 meters and csf method was then and it was like uh, the child was uh, showing poor fixation so the child strongly resisted occlusion of the left eye and quite uncooperative and started crying during the uh, visual equity check itself. So torch light examination was done. Everything was fine in the left eye. Right eye, we could see a corneal scar and the uh, FAKA was present. So this is the visual status. And uh, we tried to do the retinoscopy. So the right eye, the refraction came around plus 12 with a minus 3 cylindrical power. The reflex was quite irregular. And we tried to take a reading with the help of a handheld auto autokeratometer. Left eye, it was freezing. Right eye, we had challenges because of the scar, central scar in the visual axis. So I would like to know what type of contact lens can be prescribed for this child. So... I'm here to take the second question. Tie between uh, rigid corneal lenses and scleral lenses. And yes. silicon is number two and probably either or any any lens could work. Okay. So there is a tie between RGP and scleral lens. So I, I think like most of us have, have considered that corneal scar. So that's the reason they have opted for scleral lens and RGP lens and silicon elastomer lens, soft lens, few, few of you have opted for. All of the above is 15 percentage. So let's see what we have done for this child. Thanks, uh, Dr. Rudin. I'm ending the poll. So what we have done for this child is like we have fitted with the RGP lens. So why RGP lens? Usually we consider RGP to be the safest uh, lens option when compared to that of these soft contact lens. And uh, because the lenses are going to be very much resistant to deposits and the risk of or the chances of allergic reactions are going to be very, very less. The probability is very less when compared to that of the soft contact lenses. And in this case, the child has a corneal scar as well. So we wanted to correct the irregular astigmatism. Uh, before start, uh, before we think about the scleral lens option, because it's going to be a little larger and it requires many days of trial. And this is the first time the child is going to wear lenses. So to introduce, we have started with the RGP lens. So I have all the parameters here, retinoscopy to assess node the power, but I do not have the K value because it's like almost uh, not freezing. So how, uh, how, how would I have selected the power? So the left eye was showing flat K. So what we have done, RGP lens was inter inserted for this child. So what we have done, this is the first page, first picture showing RGP lens with a drop of saline into it. We have installed the fluorescent and then we have ins ins um, inserted the lens, applied the lens onto the child. And the next step was, uh, fit assessment was done with the help of torchlight. I hope you can see the blue color torchlight. Uh, this is the third picture. And uh, here, uh, the fixation was also checked whether the child is able to see or not. So this is how the steps of fitting contact lens happened in the clinic. So let's see what lens I have put for this patient. So to begin with, the cornea was slightly steep because of the scar. So what I have done is slightly started with the 7.7 .7 base curve with a plus 12 power 9.2. So the fit assessment was done. It was showing a steep fitting with the uh, uh, blue color torch light. There was like central pooling and all. 
uh, even in the scar area. So we try to flatten the fit. So we have a few wide range of dry lenses in this plus 12 and 9.2 uh, in our plus 12 power and 9.2 diameter. So we try to fit a little flatter lens 8.10. So that 8.10 was fitting well, the lens was centering well, there was a touch at the scar area, otherwise the mid-peripheral fit was showing good uh, clearance and the lens movement was optimal. And definitely the lens fit was quite challenging because the child, you will not expect the child to sit and show the fitting tube. So we played some, uh, uh, what to say, we showed the videos or we started to play with the child. So it was like taking a, a some some time to uh, really finalize the fit. So it's not quite easy as how you fit an adult patient. Just imagine RGP on a child's eye. So the child would def definitely have a tendency to rub their eyes. So all these challenges we had. So we uh, made a point to distract the child by showing different videos or some colorful toys in the clinic. And that, that is how we have arrived to, arrived to the final lens fitting. So over refraction was done. It was showing close to plus three diopters. So the final power actually it would have, uh, it should be 8.10 with the plus 15 and 9.2. Considering the child's age, she's only he's only uh, uh, three years old. So we have given full correction, full near correction. So plus three diopters were uh, was added. So. Uh, the final lens which we have prescribed was 8.05 base though, plus 17.5, 9.2. And the material what we have selected is fluorosilicon acrylate with a 60 dk, uh, 60 dk was chosen. And the lens was made lenticular because it in order to minimize the lens thickness. So this is, this is how the uh, lens fitting was done. So the child was closely followed up after uh, say four months as well, four months, six months and one year. So there was a progression in visual equity, which we have achieved. So earlier the child was not uh, poorly fi uh, show, uh, fixating. Now that the child is able to recognize 6 by 60 with Lia symbols at a half meter distance and left eye was perfectly fine. And the lens fit assessment was then, it was showing optimal uh, lens fit. And uh, the contactless complaints was too good. The parents were highly motivated because uh, along with the patching, so patching was also advised by the pediatrician after we have prescribed the lenses. So they have done the patching wearing the contact lens. So what has happened? The, they could find that the child has started to recognize faces or pick up the objects or able to uh, uh, see some difference with the lenses than before. So in that way, the ch parents are highly motivated and they are very happy with the way the child is seeing the world. And uh, the advice given was to have frequent follow-ups. We ensured that uh, the power can change with every visit. So we have asked them to have a change of lens if it's required during every follow-up. And that process was clearly explained to them. And uh, we have advised to take a spare contact lens because children, they tend to lose the lenses. So in that case, if in case even one month or one week, 10 days of not wearing lenses is going to uh, be... Uh, be alarming for the amblyopia to develop. So in such a case, we have asked them to take a spare lens and store it dry. So that is that has been followed by the patient uh, by the parents, and they have uh, they are very quite happy with the way the child is uh, uh, complaining to the lenses. So this is case one. I have next case. So here also the informant is mother. So this child is like this baby is only three months old. Okay, and uh, they have started to you know, notice white reflex from the 10th day of birth uh, in the left eye, but the right eye was quite normal. The child was uh, able to do the normal visual activities, nor activities, and the past ocular history it revealed that they were like diagnosed to have, the child was diagnosed to have congenital cataract and was referred to our hospital for lensectomy. So this was the reason they have visited our hospital. And the birth history was that uh, this, this child was the first child and the gestational weeks were all fine except for cesarean delivery. And emergency LSES was done due to the low fetal movement, amniotic uh, fluid aspiration and high BP in mother. And the history of incubation done and there was no history of consanguinity. Uh, the the mother was actually during the gestational period, the mother was... Uh, advised to take a TOT screening. So in the TOT screening, it revealed that IgG rubella positive and IgG 
TMV positive was uh, um, was noted. So that could be the contributing factor for the cataract, the rubella cataract. So this child was uh, advised to um, uh, advise for a lensectomy, and a lensectomy was done. So after one month of uh, lensectomy, this is the visual status of the child. Right eye is perfectly fine. Left eye uh, did not follow the light, and the refraction showed plus 19 diopters. And uh, there was poor fixation, and uh, the child completely resisted occlusion of the right eye. And uh, what happened initially to begin with, uh, they wanted to take spectacles rather going for contact lens, irrespective of the pediatrician or the ophthalmologist in, uh, uh, insisting on the contact lens uh, option. They wanted to go with the spectacle initially, but within one month of time, the child did not allow to allow uh, the parents to drop up their glasses. So that's the reason they have visited our clinic. So after two months of lensectomy, they visited to our clinic. So here we have advice for contact lenses. So examination was showing everything normal, cornea is clear, except for the aphakia in the left eye. So this is the case, these are the case details. So you have the refraction in the left eye plus 19 and K value as we, uh, we were able to obtain it. So that's a good thing because the child was quite uh, cooperative. The child was asleep actually, was sleep, sleepy. So we were able to easily uh, do the keratometer with the help of handheld auto refractometer, auto keratometer. So can you please tell me what type of contact lens can be prescribed for this uh, child? I have the poll question three. All right. So I think this time almost. Uh... 45% of them are saying uh, silicon elastomer lens, whereas some of them still are RGP and scleral lens fans. Yeah. Okay. So I'm happy like now the soft lens has taken up the higher, higher end when compared to RGP. So in this case, what we have done, see, we can prescribe both the type of lenses. I would agree you can go with the silicon hydrogen lens, like silicon elastomer lenses and RGP lenses. Uh, as uh, it differs from one practice to the other. So most of the uh, practice or most of our, in, in our clinic, what we have a, a protocol is to just start with the RGP trial, maybe during the initial phase of uh, prescribing lenses for the infants or for the children. And later in the stage, if they are completely compliant or unable to maintain the lenses or the child is completely sensitive to the RGP lenses down the line, we can move them to the silicon lenses or the soft contact lenses. So in our practice, as I have told, predominantly we prescribe the RGP lenses. What we have done is like we started prescribing the RGP lens. So this case I have started to, uh, I have prescribed the RGP lens. So this is how the child was looking with the spectacles. Left eye was, right eye was quite zero and left eye was with a higher prescription. Just look at the way how she has their uh, facial expressions. It was like frown face. So what we have done for this kid, so we have the K value I would like to show. It is like 46 and 47.5. So 7.3 is the initial base curve you ideally I would select, which we have done here as well. And uh, spectacle power is plus 19. So you do the vertex conversion, it comes close to plus 25. And uh, the K, uh, HVID was close to 10 millimeter. So we have selected a lens having plus 25 based on the vertex conversion. And the diameter what we have select was, selected was 8.5 RGP was inserted. So the, uh, as I have shown before, we instill one drop of saline and then fluorescent and insert the lens on the eye and then do the fluorescent assessment with the help of the blue torchlight. So we look in for the fluorescent pattern. So when I try to see the fluorescent pattern, it was showing a small bubble. I, I hope everybody can make a note of it. So there was a central large cooling with a small bubble, which indicates that the lens fit is obviously steep fit. So 7.3 didn't work for work out for the child. So we stepped into the next uh, uh, flatter lens, which is 7.5, which were, we had it in our trial set. So 7.5 plus 25 we have inserted. Sorry, I don't have that image. So that lens was like showing complete uh, diffuse pooling without any bubbles. And the lens movement was also quite appreciable. It was like uh, moving uh, adequately. So that lens was uh, made, at, made as the final lens. So over refraction based on the uh, uh, over refraction was done just to make sure the reflex is clear. And the final lens has been prescribed. 
with uh, 7.50 plus 28 and 8.5. Here again, the power plus 28 because we have corrected for near because the child is only three months old and uh, the lenticular design was prescribed since it's a higher prescription and the edge design what we have recommended was rounded edge in order to make sure there are no corneal adhesion of the lenses. So this was the final lens prescribed to the child. So follow-up visits, uh, closely we have monitored the child, fourth month and sixth month we have called. So again from the parent side, during occlusion, they were appreciating that the child was able to recognize the face, pick up the objects during the patching and they are able to smile at their parents or some familiar faces. So, so many uh, changes or so many improvements they have noted in their routine life and the parents are motivated and the child is also quite cooperative to wear the lenses. And during the assessment in our clinic, the child was trying to fix it and follow the light and the lens fit was optimal. There were very minimal scratches and uh, it was only fourth month we assessed. So uh, uh, there, there were no power changes, refractive error changes. So that we have asked them to continue with the same lens and the child was called after six months. So uh, here also the child, the parents were advised to take a spare lens. So this is mandatory instruction which we give to every patient to carry a spare lens so that they avoid, uh, like they don't uh, in future in during some uh, unavoidable situations, they should not be off the glasses or off the lenses. So in, uh, to maintain the continuity of wearing the uh, correction, we make sure we prescribe them a spare contact lens to uh, uh, we make sure that we, uh, we ensure to the parents to buy the spare contact lenses. So what should I have in mind whenever I am fitting an RGP lens? So definitely this lens, RGP lenses are going to be more, uh, most safe and effective mode of correction because it's going to, as I have mentioned before, the lens is going to be with a high decay material and it's going to reduce the bacterial or protein adherence, deposit resistant, and the chances of allergic reactions are very, very less. And and being a smaller diameter lens, it's very easy for the parents to handle the lenses and you can customize any number of parameters. And definitely it's going to provide better vision because even small irregularity or small uh, uh, astigmatism is going to get corrected. And then considering all the advantages, you have, we have few disadvantages as well. Risk of lens dislodgement or mislocation or the child can rub eyes, or the child might have some discomfort during lens wear. If this, all this you, you would have had in mind. But how to uh, encounter that? So you make sure the parents, whenever the child is wearing lenses, you make sure that whenever the child is so playful, uh, they do a torchlight examination in between to make sure the lens is on the eye. Or sometimes like every now and then, they can just monitor the child whether the lens is centered well on the eye or not. So all this, we give it as a guideline or we give it as a uh, advice to the parents so that uh, even they will not get panic when the lens is like uh, displaced. So the diameter range, what we have in the uh, in in the, in the complete set is eight to ten point five millimeter. Even eleven millimeter lenses are available. And how I go about fitting lens A value, you take the on A value. So the lens fit assessment, we all know, then centration, coverage, and movement. Here the coverage, we make uh, we talk about the pupillary coverage. So we are going to deal with higher prescription. So definitely there are chances the lens can low right, which can sometimes decenter or they, that can up, uh, uh, cross the visual axis, which will uh, rather uh, uh, not be uh, not serve the purpose of managing the power. So in such a case, make sure the lens is well centered when you prescribe it, and it should make it should not be of uh, uh, excessive movement. Excessive movement can also uh, make the lens dislodge here and then so make sure you fit a ideal lens with a uh, slightly restricted movement not uh, highly excessive movement and lenticular designs can be prescribed rounded edge to avoid the corneal adhesion and visibility tint you can really explain or you can just uh, 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 inform the laboratory because suppose if it's going to be bilateral effect or bilateral condition the power is going to be different different and looking at the lens definitely the parents are going to get confused so make sure green, R for right eye, and blue, L for left eye, you can just ask them to customize so that 
the parents they don't get uh, confusion so if they swap the lenses also so you can educate the parents in that way to have the lenses right in the right box which is uh, green color and left in the left box which is of the blue color so these are all the factors you need to consider when you prescribe an rgp lens to the children so i have the case a third case uh, she is 2 years old female she had injury of with a stick in the left eye followed by she has undergone a lensectomy and to begin with they have prescribed glasses the child had poor compliance to glasses and then finally they have moved of, moved to the contact lens clinic general health was normal and birth history was quite normal nothing significant so this was the initial visit visual status right was perfectly fine left eye was showing poor fixation this is the refraction value and this is the k value child was cooperative we are able to obtain with the auto uh, uh, handheld keratometer and again i have the poll question what type of lens can be prescribed for this case okay so almost 50% 48% of them think uh, uh, rgp and then a few of them think soft uh, silicon as well as clearer lens as well yeah so thanks for voting and now i have the answer we have um, so this case we wanted to try soft contact lens for this kid so we tried with the soft contact lens so why we have tried soft lens because the parents were completely demotivated to go in for rgp lens they were so so what to say they were like so much pampering the child and they don't want to have any hard lens trial and they were well aware about all other options so in spite of convincing them about the uh, rgp lens where in at the initial visits or initial phase of uh, prescribing lenses they were like quite wanted the comfortable option and being parents they are already in contact lens wearers soft lens wearers they know the uh, way to handle lenses so they wanted the child to try the soft lens only so uh, we try the soft contact lens for this child so we have the k value we have the refraction value as well so soft contact lens the initial Uh, how do you select the base curve? You have the flat K value here. You add one millimeter to it. So eight point three was the initial lens which was selected, and the spectacle power was plus fifteen. So the lens which we had selected according to the vertex conversion was plus seventeen. The lens fitting was good, and the material what we have selected was a hydrogen lens with a, a, a higher water content. So this was like a. perfectly fine the fitting was good centration good and uh, push up positive over refraction then plano was uh, we got plano plano and the clear reflex was uh, seen so this was the final lens prescribed to the child so you might wonder why we have not fixed uh, fitted a silicon hydrogen be because it was way years before where we didn't have the Uh, option of silicon hydrogen so we have fitted the child with the hema lenses and uh, that lens was like uh, with a higher water content considering the oxygen permeability and uh, the modality which was given or which was advised earlier was uh, monthly modality so cl were journey from 2 to 6 years so so when we started with the lens trial the child was wearing a hema lenses at the age of 2 and the visual acuity in the left eye was only 6 by 7.5 with clear symbols at 3 meter which has gradually improved to 6 by 12 with the snaran yeah, at the age of 4 years and at the age of 5 years the child started to uh, recognize even uh, the smallest line 6 by 9 and 6.7.5 also she is able to recognize with the help of contact lens and the visual acuity has shown a drastic improvement and uh, parallel to that the parents were highly uh what to say carrying the lenses and they were completely following the occlusion therapy so having said that compliance is good occlusion therapy is also very well followed the visual acuity is also very much improved and finally in the age of 5 years we have uh, prescribed them with the silicon hydrogen lenses so earlier we started with the hema material when there was no availability and later in the stage the child was converted from hydrogen lens to silicon hydrogens so soft lens fitting you all know it's like 1 mm flatter than flat k we fit so what you have to see in for the lens fitting uh, centration 
coverage, movement of the lens. And uh, lens centration, as I have mentioned before, it is very, very important because the optic zone carrying the high prescription, it should cover the visual axis. And hydrogen lenses can be prescribed when there is a customization possible with those lenses. Silicon hydrogen lenses, the wide ranges between plus and minus uh, 20 diopters. Otherwise, we can prescribe the silicon uh, siloxane elastomers, which is available from different labs as well. So you have other lens options apart from RGP uh, soft lens. You have the hybrid lens option also. So that's nothing but a combination of a soft lens, uh, soft lens and the RGP, where you have the RGP in the center, which is going to correct the vision. And you have the peripheral soft contact lens, which is going to provide the comfort. So the lens may, uh, uh, power range, what they uh, what was advised from the companies was between plus 6 to minus uh, 30. And these lenses, um, they have a tendency to adhere more to the eye. Uh, because of the uh, uh, steepness and it's very difficult to remove as well and when they clean the lenses there are chances the lens can tear at the transition zone so this is one of the disadvantages having the more comfort benefits and the company which was first proposed by the FDA in 2005 was uh, uh, Synergize and they have introduced a high DK RGP lens and the non-ionic soft contact lens combination and the power range, what they prescribe is plus, plus or minus 20 diopters, up to 6 diopter of astigmatism. So in our practice, very rarely we have prescribed these lenses. Apart from that, uh, say the regular uh, practice would follow RGP lens or a soft contact lens for the pediatric uh, groups. So coming to the end of my topic. So... It's all from the practice a practitioner point of view. We have covered almost what type of lens to be prescribed and what material to be given, how to select the parameters, all that is fine. At the end, we are dispensing the lens and now the role of the parent comes into play. So you will have to make sure that these are all the, these points to be like uh, told to the parents to make sure the child is properly wearing the lenses. So frequent evaluation is very, very important because the power keeps changing due to the change in axial length. So they cannot wear the same power for one year or two years, or if in case they miss the follow-up in between, that's going to be completely tragic. The child would wear an undercorrected or overcorrected power, which can itself lead to amblyopia. So this point you have to tell every parent whenever you're prescribing the lenses. And when and where lens refitting is uh, necessary, it's always better to uh, 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 inform the parents and then uh, make it mandatory. And lens handling is very important. Cleaning of the lenses, you make sure that parents, they do in the clinic. Suppose you wa want the child to wear the lenses in front of uh, the practitioner, you make sure that parents are like fitting the lenses, how they, how they are following the cleaning procedure. You can make them do it in the clinic for us to ensure that they are following the correct procedures. And whatever the lens we prescribe, it should have a normal lens performance. So there should not be any uh, adverse events like after a few hours of wear, the, uh, uh, the child's eye should not have any redness or any discomfort. The lens should not dislodge here and there. So these are all the points or these are all the clues which indicates the lens could be of a steep fit or a flat fit. So uh, based on their response, you can pick up whether we have given the optimal lens or not. So uh, uh, we ensure that the lens what we prescribe gives the normal lens performance. And the signs of adverse reactions, it has to be very well noted by the parents. So if in case the child develops redness or they're not happy, they complain or they say the watering of eyes with the lens is on. So all these you have to be, uh, inform the parents by dispensing so that they will not think that as a normal symptom and then uh, keep quiet. So uh, maybe they can contact you in such a case, you can just... Uh, talk to the parents and ask them to stop lens wear and then contact the local doctor or again revisit you for the clarification and proper usage of solution make sure you talk, tell about the alternate of solution as well suppose company a is not available you make sure you tell them company b also can be used so that they don't get panic just because company a is not available they should not stop the lens wear and again, likely loss and damage of the lenses is possible. So they ask them to carry spare lens all the time. And the spare lenses, it's, it has no, it is not mandatory to be stored in the solution. It can be kept in uh, kept in the dry case. 
So before using the uh, lenses, maybe say six hours before using the lenses, they have to store in the solution so that the lens gets hydrated and then the child can start off the lens fair. So the take home message. So whenever you try to fit fit uh, lenses for the pediatrics, particularly the infants who are so uh, like um, uh, sometimes not cooperative because they would have undergone many tests in the same day. So make sure the child is like completely sleep, asleep and then you try to fit the lenses. So suppose the child is so active, crying, don't try to fit the lenses that can sometimes choke or that, that would lead to some other uh, uh, complications. So make sure the child is asleep and then you can try to fit the lenses. And as I have mentioned earlier, every visit there are chances of refractive error change and clear reading change. So the lens, wherever it's necessary, the lens refitting has to be done. And good to fit uh, contact lens, suppose the child has undergone some surgery, say some uh, traumatic scar or some, make sure it is completely healed and then you start off the lens fitting process and you ask them to carry a spare lens. This has to be told to the parents all the time. So thank you all. Thank you all for the patient listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for that uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. So, so there was a question earlier. I think you did also mention it in the education part about the use of solution. So do you usually prescribe them with uh, hydrogen peroxide all the time or them with multipurpose solutions only? So based on the availability, most of the, most of the time we... Um, we prescribe them with a multipurpose solution. So hydrogen peroxide, it's somewhere uh, in the country. It's not available in all the parts of the country. So uh, we would advise them to go with a multipurpose solution. If in case it's required, maybe uh, we can recommend them about the usage of uh, hydrogen peroxide and the name of the solution can be recommended. All that can be conveyed clearly to the parents if in case if it's required. Yeah. And uh, the other question which has uh, come up is, uh, you know, you shared with us the cases, especially the case one and case two, where you fitted them with uh, cornea lenses. Were these kids fitted under anesthesia or uh, they were they were just not required to be fitted under so anesthesia? First, okay, actually, the first case I have shown, shared my in the pictures also. The, so that was done in the clinic. So both the yeah. cases were done in the clinic. Yeah, so it was not under anesthesia. It was no. when the patient was usually asleep and under semi sedated state, uh, where mm -hmm. where you can have more control uh, over them rather than they moving their hands and things like that. Uh, any any thoughts about if let's say you do fitting under the anesthesia uh, in terms of the fitting? So does it really uh, change or can we rely on exactly the fitting what we are getting? Uh, under anesthesia or do we need to consider something? See, uh, even we have fitted lenses under anesthesia, say uh, multiple assessments has to be done. Say, for example, they wanted to do the IOP check or axial check. So they incorporate a contact lens fitting also into that list. And then we are also called to fit under anesthesia. So how we go about fitting there, we, we, you have the, the child's eyes will be opened with the help of retractor. So you will have the uh, auto keratometer to uh, which is going to tell about the uh, K value. And when I'm going to fit the lenses, I just take out the retractor and then fit the lens. And voluntarily, I will make sure the lens, uh, the eye is blinking. So uh, you will not expect that dynamic moment. So voluntarily, we just try to move the lens. We make sure the lens is moving or and uh, even the fluorescent pattern is going to guide us whether the lens is going to be a steeper fit or a flatter fit. So this is one way of uh, identifying the optimal fit. Another thing, the lens movement can be well appreciated by voluntarily moving the lens. And most of the time, we have never seen much of a difference uh, fitting under anesthesia and the final lens, whatever it has arrived. It is almost equal. Yeah. And uh, do you give any special advices or uh, does your advice change when you fit them with corneal lenses versus soft lens? So do you do you kind of give different advices for rigid corneal lens wearers compared to soft lens wearers or ideally they are the same? 
see definitely uh, at one point i was like explain uh, telling everywhere like the soft rgp lenses are going to be much safer and deposit resistant so uh, cleaning the soft lenses uh, it's very very important you make sure the parents they rub and clean the lenses because sometimes uh, they don't rub the lenses at all so or they forget the procedure say that procedure has to be ensured that before they fit on the lenses or after they remove the lens we make sure they rub the clean clean the lenses and again deposits any presence of uh, uh, deposits on the lens surface has to be evaluated whenever you go in for the change of lenses suppose the child is coming after 3 months if in case you are going to change the lens just observe the lens whether you are able to see any amount of deposits are there or not so accordingly you can convert the child to say quarterly to monthly disposable monthly modality or monthly to biweekly modality so likewise you can categorize based on the uh, care regimen uh, uh, how they have followed whereas in rgp lenses most of the time except for the scratches we have never seen deposits on the lens surface or sometimes uh, 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 the lens would have cracked at the edge that could be because the, they uh, they dropped the lens or stamped over it that could be the reason otherwise uh, rgp lenses we have never seen any deposits except for the scratches so care regimen when compared to rgp lenses uh, extra care has to be taken and extra disposing lenses has to be ensured by to the parents uh, in terms of modality. Yeah, great. And uh, there's uh, somebody wants to know, let's say you have, I mean, uh, definitely you have all the options in the clinic. How, what are the things you look for if you want to choose an RGP versus scleral versus soft? Are you the one making decision or is there some criteria you follow that, okay, if I see these signs or if I see this, an RGP would be better. If I see this, a soft would be better. Are there any such guidelines which you can uh, share with us? To begin with, if I, I'm going to fit a lens for a child, definitely I would first opt for the RGP lens fit. And uh, maybe down the line, if the child is not, say, after six months or after one year, say, if we have happened to have a past history of not wearing lenses just because they had developed discomfort or the parents, they are very, uh, uh, like, uh, they, they felt so uh, unhappy to put the lenses or so. In such a case, maybe down the line, you can convert the patient to the soft contact lens option. But first and foremost thing, what we would prescribe is the RGP. And again, high refractive errors or in cases of uh, corneal scar where you see some uh, astigmatism, definitely the visual quality is going to get improved with the help of RGP than soft lenses. So keeping that in mind, RGP would be the first lens of choice for all the pediatric cases. Maybe uh, after three years or four years, suppose they are not going for any of the surgical option, you can convert them to soft lens so that the child is quite understandable or the parents are also able to uh, uh like uh, handle the lenses or they are okay to change the lens every month or every three months then the next option of silico uh, uh, soft contact lenses can be prescribed and scleral oh. lenses coming to scleral lenses uh definitely uh scleral lens option for all the ocular surface disorders and uh, even for uh, trauma trauma cases corneal scar uh, recently we had a publication from Ali Prasad where they have a, a fitted lenses for a traumatic uh, scar case with a scleral lens. So uh, even scleral lenses can be tried. If at all, all the other options are waiting for you in case of scarred cornea, say RGP particularly. Wonderful. Great. Uh, yeah, I think with that, thank you so much for uh, you know sharing uh, all that guideline and your thoughts and also about you know the, the the tips on when to select and what lens we trying to select uh, so that we are we are able to fit our patients and making sure as you mentioned in the beginning the amblyopia giving them the best visual correction so that they can see and the, the ocular development happens normally so thank you so much for sharing that with us today thanks for everything thank you all thank you so much we do have session planned over the next weekends. We will, uh, until then, take care, be safe, and uh, hope to see you during the next session. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.